think, um, I mean, we're talking about Sheila Redpath, who in, in, um, in netball is a legend. She's here at the World Cup. She's a technical official coordinator, which is an assessor of the technical bench. Um, she did my job now uh, for 30 years at England Netball, so I kind of picked up where she left off, which is an immense thing. But, I mean, she's just captivated that fire in so many umpires in this country across the last 30 years and did exactly that with me and, and made me realise that something that I never probably would have been involved in is something that I'm involved in to this day 20, 22 years later. So I had aspirations to be a, um, a hockey umpire to that level and, and um, you know, be involved in international sport and um, you know, the development in those areas wasn't um, you know, forthcoming. So it was that spark that Sheila sort of said you could be involved in international sport and sport at the highest level. It doesn't matter what the sport is, you could travel the world and, and be in, involved in elite sport. It just so happened that elite sport was, um, was uh, netball and it was umpiring. You know, I always, always aspired to represent uh, my country is a sports performer but didn't have that innate skill to do it so umpiring is something you can absolutely train from being a complete novice to being you know one of the best in the world. I think that's probably Sheila's, Sheila's tutelage that actually she never said that the end result was going to the world youth in the Cook Islands. That, that was never a thing. It was all about achievable milestones, making yeah. sure you get to the next level and keeping you grounded on that. Uh, because, you know, the, the, the performance pyramid itself, the very tip is not going to be accessible by everybody. Um, and you, you have to work blooming hard to get there. And, and um, you know, so it was those small steps. Um, but it's, I think it's a mark of her as well that, that she actually paid for herself to go to the Cook Islands to spectate, you know. We all live in England and it's quite a far way away. Yeah. One thing I would say is just to enjoy it more yeah. um, because you put so much pressure on yourself and you read into, I mean allocations is the big thing that everyone reads into, well, what does that mean, what does this yeah. mean and what does that mean? But actually it probably took me two major championships before I actually started disregarding that and, and focused on just being the best umpire I could yeah. be. Um, so, you know, I, if, if, if a message to any young umpire is coming, just do the best. Only you can, can control your future. Mm -hmm. You know, what's happening with everybody else has nothing to do with you because you can only be the best that you can be. Goodness me, that's a good question. Um, because so often, you know, this, my success and being appointed to finals is to the detriment of England not being in them. So probably the happiest I've ever been on the sideline watching was when England won the Commonwealth Games mm. in, in 2018. Um, but I just think it's those games, you know, when you're, when you're talking to high profile referees and um, umpires in particular, it's those games when you know that you've not made any or many mistakes, you know. We are talking about making you know, one or two or zero mistakes when you get to the level that myself and my colleagues are at now, and that's massive. I think it's the pressure that you put on yourself, the pressure to be perfect in a situation where you can't achieve perfection. Um, I think sometimes, you know, the outside influences of people that feel that they can make a judgment on you as a person because of some of the decisions that you've made as an umpire. Mm. You know, just because you made a mistake doesn't mean to say that you're a terrible person. And it's those people that, the faceless people that hide behind social media and feel that they can send you that mm. sort of stuff is always a, always a problem. But, you know, you prepare yourself to be resilient to that. But no one can ever beat an umpire up more than they'll beat themselves up. Well, I'll be at home more, um, but I'm not sure actually. I think I'll always be involved in sport, um, mm. but but I, I think you know it takes a, it takes a certain type of person to be an umpire or a referee, and it and if it wasn't if it wasn't rugby uh, if it wasn't netball, prob um, it would probably be rugby or something like that, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, it's uh, interesting. I'm going to have a break and spend uh, a really long summer with my family, which, um, you know, I wouldn't be here if my wife wasn't amazing. Mm. I miss my uh, daughters terribly. Um, but yeah, it's time for a break. Um, one of the other umpires that's been on the journey, the length that I've been on it, um, she said to me, but Gary, you've got to realise I had three years off with maternity leave and I haven't had that. So it is, it's the end of a four year cycle. It's a good time to have some time off and get some, get some work done, but actually just take stock on the last 10 years as an international and, and um, if I'm going to take a break it's this year 
and we'll see what happens after that. If England win the World Cup, we then move to a different uncharted territory mm. that we've never been. The, the springboard that the 2018 um, win gave the sport uh, has just been astronomical and, and we've seen that in winning things like Sports Personality of the Year, yeah. two, two, two awards on that. I think if we do win, uh, that, that takes us there, it continues with the momentum. But actually, I think we've got people looking. We've got people looking at netball that weren't looking at it before. We we're on terrestrial television. Every game after day four is on terrestrial television. Every day from day one is on pay-per-view with, yeah. with Sky Sports. So, I mean, we are in, in a zone that we've never been before. And I know that England Netball as a company are working uh, incredibly hard to kind of capitalise on that and make sure that we've got participation you know it's not just about the elite sport you know there's that massive part of that performance pyramid that that has um, you know older ladies that are coming on back to netball girls that are coming through as, as, as first taster sessions you know walking netball that brings people back into the sport that once may once have played it so yeah I think it's um, just the growth of netball and its credibility is just through the roof I got it after got, got awarded it after my 50th test, um, and just I mean I, I don't never um, intended to use it. I mean it's here now, but I never intended to use it. But it has become kind of like a I think the media really like it more than anything else, you know. And, and then times when I haven't used it because I've I've left it at home, they always seem to assume it's still there. But um, I think it's a mark of of, of where I've been. Um, you know, I'm proud of, of proud of nearly 100 matches. Hopefully, getting my 100th match during here, and it's um, you know it's a, it's probably a, a little bit showy for some people. But yeah, I think I've earned earned the right to yeah. use it. I think I'm as known as I am because I look like I do. I don't fit the mould of a you know a normal netball umpire um, historically. You know. Um, so that's probably why it's my hairstyle that gets me remembered. But um, but I think you know we always strive to be seen and heard, but not remembered. Yeah. That's the thing. We don't really want to be the main event because the girls train hard. They're the celebrities, mm. uh, not necessarily us. So we like to fly under the radar. You know, they always say the best umpires are those that you don't remember. I don't think I'll ever. I don't think I'll ever not work within netball or within officiating. I think the natural step from from coming on the, off the court is to turn into, a, a, you know, become an umpire coach. Uh, but, you know, I'm fully aware that I might not be as good as that. I don't do it now. Uh, I do it with younger umpires, but I don't do it at the elite level. And, and some people have transitioned off and not wanted to do it. So I see myself involved, but... But it's I'm, almost like a full cycle, you becoming yeah, yeah. a mentor no, for absolutely, the next yeah. generation of Gary yeah, yeah, But let's just hope it doesn't turn out like Darth Vader did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Gary. Good on you. Thanks very much.